Hi there, Robin here from Expert On, and today we're gonna to take this speaker apart. What speaker is it? This is a prototype speaker. So I'll talk all about how we ended up with a prototype speaker, and it's a consumer grade product, so what that means is if we look at the back, it's gonna have features like Bluetooth, MP3 player, that sort of thing. It's gonna have RCAs, auxiliary jacks on it. Um, so we label that as a consumer product because uh, it's a lot friendlier and easier to use if you're taking it home for like parties and stuff like that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cover apart, we're gonna talk about the design, the shape, the size. We had this made for us here a couple of years ago. Uh, so it's a fully functioning speaker. There's nothing actually wrong with it physically. Um, just that we ended up going with some of the brands out there uh, after getting this product. So we'll talk a bit more about that as we take it apart. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the cover off. We're gonna work our way through the whole thing. We're gonna disassemble the cabinet, pull out all the drivers, take a look at the amp plate, do all of that. These are all the tools I hope I need to make the job work. Uh, some of them are pretty long extensions and you'll see why in a minute. So I may cut through this as we go on. Uh, if it's just, you know, boring to me. So if it's boring to me, it's probably gonna be boring to you, but we'll keep all the good bits on. So right now there's eight screws that hold the cover on. So as we're taking this off, you'll notice that this is not like your original type of party speaker, like a lot of the speakers that are out there. It's kind of more of a square shape, not uh, so much an egg shape. Uh, that's because this is the new benchmark in style for a speaker. Uh, you can thank, I guess, JBL for that. And what that really is, is just, they kind of set the trend. They, they tend to be first with big changes, uh, traditionally. And uh, companies uh, tend to favor that as an option. So how does somebody like me end up with prototypes? Well. We're in Canada, uh, our customer base is everywhere, but we're, we're here and of course our product either has to be here or we have to make arrangements. So when we had this made, we were buying through all the Canadian suppliers and then nobody really had a speaker like this. So we ended up uh, going this route as one of the ways of getting the product in Canada. So right after this showed up, we started making partner arrangements with companies with like Gemini, uh, with uh, Alltech Lansing, uh, and then with now Blast King. So there's lots of relationships being made and there was no real reason for us to actually go out and say, oh, we gotta make 250 of these. And so we moved away from it, but it's still here. So here we go. Now, uh, at the same time, that being said, we've taken the cover off. There it is. So. First thing about prototypes is that they're normally made up of a mash of other brands or other companies kind of parts uh, because we're basically approving the style, the overall look, seeing how it sounds, asking for any adjustments after that, saying, oh, well, I need more dampening inside of it or I need a better driver or I want to upgrade the size of the horn. I can make all those adjustments afterwards. But we had this as a prototype first made, so this way we can improve the overall style and look of the speaker. Cover off. So the cover was actually pretty good. It, I mean, it's a, a solid gauge on it. I, I did like the pattern on it. There was nothing wrong with that. Uh, we've now gotten inside. We can tell this has been sitting here now for quite a little while because it's got dust on it. And uh, we're gonna go inside. So the speaker had ports on it. It had the horn standard, the fusion of sound. It had a 60 by 90 spread. So that meant I wanted to cover the room 90 this way, 60 this way. Uh, we didn't want to go any more than this because we wanted to keep the price reasonable. Uh, if this was an actual JBL per se, uh, it would have had that leafy effect going on here to help confine the sound to match up with the horn. Uh, and if it was an electro voice, it would have had a better horn distribution system to line up with the woofer. So you have to make choices and choices cost money. So now let's take off the woofer itself. So we didn't uh, want to go with a uh, polypropylene or a plastic driver. Uh, a real good plastic driver is really nice, but uh, really expensive if you want to have it made out of a thick enough material. Uh, plus, uh, a lot of people say it doesn't really work that well when you have 
a uh, plastic engineered box. So, I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I am uh, a big fan of cardboard material pressed into place. So, lots of screws. So far, they've all been Phillips, and uh, they've all been very consistent, which tells me the factory's doing a good job. Uh, even though it's a prototype, they could, you know, pretty much mismatch anything they want because somebody actually had to put this together by hand to meet our, our, our requirements. So, that being said, let's talk a bit about the factory. Now, the factory that we got this from actually makes a bunch of speakers for a whole bunch of other companies. Uh, that's just the way it is now. These are made in China. And with that being said, uh, there's not a ton of companies because they don't have to be. This is how they keep the cost reasonable uh, and keep the whole thing in check. So a manufacturer would go based on what they're looking for feature-wise, go to the manufacturer, uh, work with them with their designs and their engineering and all that other great stuff that's required to do a good product, and then have the factory work on it and do it for them. So there we go, that part's off. Now, what I forgot is that yes, we do have dampening inside of here. They did try a lot to make sure they got us a product that we'd be really happy with right out of the box. Um, so the speakers aren't actually clipped on, they've been soldered on. So that being said, we're going to have to take a look at the back and take the amp off. So let's try and rearrange this a little bit. So here we go, amp plate. Amp plates are, are pretty easy to take off. There's usually screws all the way around the outside. Uh, on a consumer unit, you always have to look at how much noise is gonna come off an actual amp plate. Um, because they are trying to make this as affordable as possible without sacrificing the overall quality. So you wanna make sure that you don't get a lot of noise transferred through here. Now, you can either make it out of thicker materials, which some companies do. Uh, you can also put a enclosed basket in the back. You can add some reinforcement to it. You can do all kinds of things. What we asked the company to do for us was one of the options for the box was to have an enclosed compartment. So that's the way we chose to go with it. It was just a choice at the time. I thought, you know, that would be a good way to go. Uh, other companies who do it that way, by the way, uh, JBL Eon, which I've seen inside, is that way. Now, I'm not saying this is an Eon in any way, but uh, when a company does something well and you think it's a good idea, there's nothing wrong if it's an option to have it. So, did I hope I missed the screw. So, go back and get that one off. Yeah, I think I got them all now. There we go. Didn't have to put any force to that at all. Amp plate is off. Now, because this was built for us as a prototype, this was a generic amp plate that they had. Those are speakers they had, and they basically made it all fit together. Somebody actually put crimps on it and crimped the speaker wire system together and made that all happen. So what we're gonna do is, well, we've got to disconnect the horn and the woofer from the assembly. So I am just gonna take my needle nose and hopefully we can get these off just like that. So uh, everything's kind of built into it as layers. On the top, there's the actual uh, digital display board which has Bluetooth in it, which is why we do have a wire supposedly somewhere here which does not appear to be here. And that is for the Bluetooth. So if I wanted to make that better, I'd have to add that on. It also has some other options. Right now, all we're using is the preamp to go down to the actual main module down here, which is the sandwiched piece inside of here. That's our actual digital preamp control. And this is our entire amplified plate on the backside. And then power supply and all the other controls are just down at the bottom. So I'm not an engineer, so I'm not gonna go through all of these things, but the important thing is it was all there and it all worked. So we're gonna pull the wires out for the actual. And voila, we now have two separate pieces. We have taken off the amp plate. We have taken off the actual 15 inch sub, sorry, base module. 
woofer. Now we've got to deal with the tweeter on top. Now normally I just go through the back of the box to have a look-see at that, but we can't. So what we'll do is we'll pull the wires through and now I'm gonna dig in there and get all the screws out from around the actual casing to take a better look at what's going on inside. So as you can see, the style we chose had a separate compartment for the amp plate, so this way. The idea was to not have air transfer uh, coming through and making a lot of noise through the amp plate, uh, and also keeping all the pressure off of the actual electronics itself. So that was the reason why I chose that way. We are gonna need an extension for this part because these screws are buried in there. So we're gonna fast forward this a little bit because there's like a dozen screws, if not more. So I'll show you that we're doing a couple of them and then we'll just kind of fast forward to the end here. Okay, so here we are back on the top and we've taken out all the screws. Some of them stayed inside, but they'll fall out when I drop the back cover. Uh, so let's take a look inside and see what's going on. So all I have to do now is pull these two apart. Voila, the actual inside of our prototype speaker. And there's our tweeter, which we will take off. Now this is the eight ohms. I've seen this tweeter before uh, using some of the other brands and I find there's nothing wrong with it because well, I've never had to replace one for a customer in as many years as I can think of doing this. Um, so that's a good thing. Easy enough to take off because it's so huge. Just literally unscrew it all the way. Uh, this tweeter tends to be eight ohms. This is probably one of the reasons why uh, it doesn't have to be replaced too often. Uh, the drawback is for certain brands, it's not uh, a piece you can put inside because it's, it's quite large uh, in the over diameter. Uh, the overall diameter, that is. Uh, but it's, it's a real good tweeter. It really does the job at being a tweeter. So there you go. That's, that's how it is. Uh, normally, this is all molded. And a good case design would have a lot of ribs in it to keep it reinforced. Good long screw attachments, solids, got ports. Everything's all molded into these things now, uh, which is really what you're looking for. So um, standard setup. Nothing sticking out here, uh, except that the, the craftsmanship's pretty good for, you know, this cover. Um, like I said, long screws, that's real important. Long, good screws that bite in really well. So they didn't really cheap out on that, so. And again, we see this on other consumer brands. So that's a big positive. Uh, here we have dampening. Now I have seen on other consumer brands where there is no dampening insulation at all. Uh, which is a little problematic. Now this speaker also, we added fly points to the top and bottom, uh, which are sometimes there, sometimes not. Uh, basically they're bolts, so this way we can hang the speakers from the ceiling. We thought that was important, so we had that added on to it. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal, but if you plan on hanging speakers, it's good to have that there. So you use basically an M10 or an M20 bolt thread on top. Bolts aren't cheap for these things, but definitely that's what's going on there. So handles, and everything's got a nice fit and finish to it. The handles have no screws on it on the outside. They're all molded in nut and bolt assembly from the inside. So it makes for a solid, nice looking handle. That was straight there. Not too complicated to take off. We'll yank one of those off, take a closer look. So of course, I'm only missing one socket in my entire socket set, which is a 10 millimeter, which is the, oh, guess what? The size I needed. So I'm cheating a little bit using, using a 3 8 which is, well, just a hair too small, it's like, you know, 9.7 millimeters. So it just doesn't fit, but I've already loosened it, so it'll come off. Again, if the, man, if the company commissioning the product doesn't say they want to have all these things there, guess what? They won't be there. It'll be like save a nickel here, save a dime there, and before you know it, you go from a product that's pretty good to a product that's not so good. 
And now I've taken the two off. I can come here, pull the handle off, and there we go. Again, all molded in. The actual screw is set right into the actual plastic, reinforced, realized plastic. It was probably available in metal, but this is what they had on the actual prototype when they sent it to us. Same thing with the wheels. The, the wheels that are on the back, could you be there have been molded so they're screwed in from the back side? Uh, or in this case, the wheels are molded from the inside. Now remember, wheels on all these products are really consumer grade type luggage wheels, which means don't be running it outdoors forever. You're just gonna ruin these things. Doesn't matter uh, who you buy it from. Uh, they're mostly made out of a rubber that's not gonna last forever. Uh, it'll, and if you're using it a lot and you're dragging it along on the sidewalk for miles and miles, you're gonna wear through them pretty, pretty fast. Then you'll have to come up with some alternative. So there we go. We take a closer look inside. Again, we're gonna see a lot of ribs reinforcing the actual box and that's uh, to stop it from having this problem. Uh, once you put the face on it, this part's gonna go away. What you're more worried about is sound transfer and you know bad vibrations from the box. Uh, that's what makes a box that has a lot of angles on it really good. The more angles on a box, the more reinforced that box is gonna be. So there you go. Like I said, I wasn't too upset with the product. Uh, it could have been a lot better. Um, uh, it didn't have as much power as I was hoping for. I was looking for something that was going to be like the Altec Lightning and this particular product just wasn't there. Uh, so we did make arrangements, we got lucky. We were able to bring that into Canada. So now Altec Lightning's here and soon we're gonna also have one from Blast King. And I mean, that's pretty much it. So we'll do a quick video, separate video of me putting this all back together again. But again, 15 inch driver, pretty straightforward. You're always gonna see these big magnets on it. Uh, I think this one was a four ohm based on what they had. The important thing about powered speakers all together, besides the fact that they have big magnets on the woofers that catch everything, is really the fact that you have three pieces coming together that can make a one really great product. This is where the sum of its parts way outweigh the individual pieces all together. Though the individual pieces have to be good for it all to work. And that's gonna be the different price points that you look at. So you also have to ask yourself, am I buying this for my backyard, for my rec room, for my cottage, or am I buying this for work? Uh, when you're saying, okay, I'm buying this for work, then you wanna buy a D-class power amp, which this is, this is an AB amp. This is like having a gas engine instead of a diesel. You wanna have something that's a good solid workhorse. Also, when it comes to the overall products, you're gonna get choices from different manufacturers, features, benefits. Price is definitely gonna drive the reason why you buy one over the other, but price is also gonna be based on how much quality is put into it. Uh, there's lots of companies that are getting better. So a lot of companies are either getting out of the business altogether of doing consumer products, or they're trying to make their consumer products better than they were two years ago or three years ago. So you're gonna see a lot of new models, uh, but you're also gonna see a lot of new models that have this style, this look to it. So there we go, eight ohm, big honking uh, tweeter, 15 inch woofer, pretty close to what we see in a lot of these packages these days. Amp plate with all the bells and whistles on it. And we're gonna wrap it up with that. If you have any questions or comments on this video or any others, inside of a 15 inch party speaker, leave them down below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. This is gonna let me know if uh, I should be taking apart any other speakers. Uh, if there's anything specific you'd like to see in other videos, leave them down in the comments down below again. And again, remember to subscribe. It's always important. Remember to hit that like button. That's always a big thing. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.